So good morning all of you. Today we are going to discuss about mitochondria, its basic structure and function. You know that mitochondria uh, was first discovered by Kolika in 1850 and uh, he called them as Sarkozo. Ra uh, later, in 1894, Altman called them as Bioblast. And the term mitochondria was first put forwarded by Binda in 1897. All the mitochondria in a cell are collectively known as chondriome. Okay. Now come to the occurrence of mitochondria. Where mitochondria are found? They are found in all aerobic eukaryotic cells. Okay. But they are absent in prokaryotic cells where the function of uh, mitochondria is carried out by mesosomes. Okay, which act as a substitute of mitochondria. In case of matured mammalian RBC, mitochondria are absent, but in young RBC, mitochondria are present, but in matured one, the mitochondria are lost or absent. And thus, the mammalian RBC, matured mammalian RBC, is totally dependent on glycolysis, so that they, so that their ATP demand can be met. Got it? Another important thing is that. The mitochondria are pleomorphic organelles. That means they keep on changing their uh, structure in their developmental stages, in various developmental stages. Okay. Now come to size, shape, and lifespan of mitochondria. It is generally a rod set, but sometimes it can be a filamentous one. Its length is around one to five uh, your uh, micrometer, and breadth is around zero point two to one point five micrometer. It appears yellow is due to richness of riboflavin and manganese. Similarly, its lifespan is 5 to 10 days. It is produced from pre-existing mitochondria. So, a mitochondria is developed from pre-existing mitochondria. Now, as far as ultrastructure of mitochondria is concerned, it consists of mitochondrial envelope and a matrix. A mitochondrial envelope again consists of just like your chloroplast consists of outer membrane and inner membrane. The outer membrane and inner membrane are around 60 to 75 angstrom thick and the outer membrane is smooth and porous due to presence of integral proteins called porins and these porins help the smaller molecules to pass, to pass through the outer membrane. Whereas the inner membrane shows infoldings which are otherwise known as cristae. Uh, why these infoldings are there? These infoldings are there so that the surface area of the inner membrane gets increased. Okay. In between this outer and inner membrane, there is intermembrane space, which is which we otherwise know call as perimitochondrial space. So again, like your chloroplast, the mitochondria is a, is a double membrane structure, and the presence of outer inner membrane. And the outer and inner membrane, they enclose a peri-mitochondrial space or intermembrane space. Now, the inner membrane is provided with F0, F1 particles called oxygomes, which are placed at regular intervals of 100 angstrom. So, you have come across your F0, F1 particles in chloroplast. There, we have written F0, F1 particles as CF0, CF1 particles, but here, the F0, F1 particles are called oxygomes and they are placed at regular intervals of 100 angstrom and they are associated with the inner membrane. Okay? There are around 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 particles in each mitochondrium. So F0, F1 particles number ranges between 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5. F0, F1 particles consist of three important parts that is a head part and a base part and the head and base part they are attached through the through a stalk. So if we draw the diagram of a F0 F1 particle, this one is the head part and this one is the stalk and this one is the base part. Okay. This one is the base part. The head part is called F1 part and the base part is called F0 part. And this this is the stalk. Now remember that, that the head part or F1 part uh, lies towards the matrix side or immer remains immersed in the matrix side whereas the base part remains attached to the inner membrane okay the inner membrane uh, has cardiolipin a phospholipid which makes the membrane impermeable to ions and this is highly necessary for 
your uh, ATP synthesis. Okay. The matrix is the fluid which is enclosed by the inner membrane. You know that there is presence of outer membrane, inner membrane and the inner membrane encloses the cavity called uh, your uh, matrix just like the I mean uh, stoma in case of your chloroplast. Here we call it as matrix. The matrix has the enzymes for Krebs cycle, DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, 70s ribosomes, circular DNA, DNA. Okay. So matrix is rich in enzymes for Krebs cycle, DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, then your 70s ribosomes, circular DNA, etc. So uh, we can say that the uh, your uh, mitochondria is self-capable in synthesizing its own DNA, own RNA, its own protein synthesis, isn't it? That's the reason why we call the uh, your mitochondria is semi-autonomous organelle, just like the chloroplast. Got it? So what is the function of mitochondria? Obviously, its major function is cellular respiration. That is the production and storage of ATP. And thus, it is otherwise known as powerhouse of the cell. Some other functions include lipid synthesis and beta-oxidation of fatty acids in case of animals. So these are the four important functions found in case of your mitochondria. So let us go to the diagram of mitochondria. As you can see here, the mitochondria consists of an outer membrane. This is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. And in between the outer and inner membrane, there is intermembrane space. Got it? The inner membrane encloses matrix and these envelope, I mean these foldings are called criste. These foldings are called criste. Now, uh, these are the F1, F0 particles. These one, these one, the F4, F0, F1 particles or ATP synthetase we call it. The represents of also DNA, then your uh, ribosomes, etc. So all these things are found in case of your ribosome, I mean mitochondria. So I hope this particular video would be helpful for you in understanding the basic structure and function of mitochondria. Thank you.